Well, what's up again guys, Brian here at 3 tier here to present my official game review for the highly anticipated fighting game for the popular RPG franchise, so it'll be titled Final Fantasy Dissidia NT. Right from the very beginning, the entire idea behind the Final Fantasy Dissidia series seemed like an intriguing concept on paper. What would happen if you took several prominent characters from the Final Fantasy franchise and placed them in a fighting game? As a massive fan of the series, I have really enjoyed many hours between the two prior entries back in the PSP days, so when an updated arcade version of the game was created and then we would find out it would eventually be released in home consoles, one could easily understand my excitement and anticipation for this title. And while Final Fantasy Dissidia NT can certainly provide you with an enjoyable experience to the fans of the series, it unfortunately is a heavily flawed in a number of key departments that prevent this entry from being an overall great game. For starters, not only is the main story barren with very little actually going on between characters, but the execution of the story is simply horribly handled. Instead of giving you a simple campaign mode that allows you to just jump in and experience the story, instead it is told through multiple paths of different nodes that can only be unlocked by collecting pieces of memoria, and the only way to collect pieces of memoria is by playing through specific gameplay modes which will grant you one to two pieces of memoria at a time. This is a horrible idea because unless you choose to just grind through the gameplay modes and collect more than 20 to 30 pieces of memory at once, you will only be able to see each part of the story in pieces before you have to leave again to collect more pieces of memory, which will cause you to forget different parts of the story unless you choose to rewatch specific cutscenes. Now, if I had to sum up the overall plot to Dissidia NT without spoiling too much just in case you're interested in playing, what happens is that you have these two gods in Materia and Spiritus, and when their shared world is threatened by a powerful being, each god summons a set of heroes and villains to their realm in order for them to fight and attempt to save their world from total destruction. As stated earlier though, the story for the most part is barren, with nothing really going on. Each specific group of characters spends most of their time simply walking around and talking about events that had happened before in previous games, or simply trying to understand exactly what is going on this time around. Now, not all of the story mode is horrible, as the performances from all the voice actors is spot on for the characters, and the best thing that the fans of the series can certainly enjoy and remember the most is the interactions between these characters. My favorite being a little back and forth exchange of insults between two characters from Final Fantasies 8 and 11 that goes on for some time. Jumping into gameplay, if you happen to play either of the two previous installments in the Dissidia franchise, the gameplay style is very simple with a number of additions this time around. At release, there are currently 28 playable characters to choose from, with rumors stating that many more will be arriving in future DLCs, that all have different combat styles that perfectly reflects the type of character that they are, and visually, all of the character models look amazing. There are also multiple maps that are taken right from specific locations from each of the primary Final Fantasy games within the franchise, which all work well with their size and structure to better enhance the gameplay format. For starters, instead of focusing on a 1v1 system like the two prior games had done before, it has now been pushed to 3-on-3 three -three team battles, which adds a whole new dimension of strategy to the overall gameplay. The battle system works with you having two forms of attacks. You have basic attacks and bravery attacks. You will use your basic attacks to lower your opponent's bravery counter along with increasing your own. Once you have caused enough damage to break your opponent's health bar, you will then execute a bravery attack to incapacitate an opponent. The first team to knock out three opponents wins the match. During each match, each character will have access to a couple of combative perks that can be activated and help you aid you and your teammates during combat that can be earned by leveling up your characters through experience. Each team will also have the ability to call a summoning to aid them in battle, which will be chosen right before the match starts, with each unique summoning dishing out a heavy amount of powerful attacks to tip the scale of the battle in one team's favor. Each summoning can be called upon by attacking a summoning crystal that will appear in a random location on the map, and once a team has collected enough energy, they can automatically call forth the summoning. There's also a secondary gameplay mode called Core Battle, which plays out very similar to the basic gameplay mode, except this time during combat you will need to target specific crystals, and whichever team can successfully destroy the opposing team's crystal first, wins. Now, as fun as the primary combat system can be, it does provide a number of problems that are unavoidable. 
With the combat system using a team-based three-on-three system now, it clutters the screen making it very difficult to keep track of exactly what is going on. With six characters operating at once, you not only have to keep track of your health bar and bravery meter, but you need to keep track of everyone to know who you need to be targeting along with who on your team is in trouble the most. And with the action being so fast paced, the camera can have serious amount of difficulties keeping track of exactly what is going on, especially if characters are too close together. This becomes extremely apparent on the harder difficulties. Even if you are the best player on your map, your characters can easily cost you the match because you are too distracted keeping track of your own meter and health bar and trying to focus on which opponent to target, while not even realizing that multiple opponents are targeting you at the same time, which can easily cause you to lose the match most of the time. Now, if you decide that you don't want to battle another team, you do have the option to take on summonings as boss fights, however, they are only unlocked by defeating them within the story mode, and while I personally only found one of these bosses extremely difficult to defeat, as long as you select the right character and apply the right approach, you should find yourself defeating these bosses easily. As you win battles and level up your characters, you will receive treasures which pretty much acts as this game's loot system, and grant you a series of random collectibles which range from different skins for your characters to music tracks that can be played during battle. But if there's a specific collectible that you want, you can use the gill that you will also gain alongside your treasures to purchase a collectible of your choice. With everything now said and done, for my final verdict, the question now remains, is Final Fantasy Decided NT worth a full price? And unfortunately, in the current state that it is in, I can't say that it is. I can't even say that this is a game that I would recommend to everyone unless you're a specific type of Final Fantasy fan like I am. If you're someone who has never played a Final Fantasy game before in your life, this really is something you should avoid because without having any background information on the characters or events that they are talking about in this game, you're going to be completely lost. And even if you are a fan like me, there's just no question that the presentation and execution of the story was horrible. There was just no excuse for getting around that fact. Now, in terms of gameplay, it is undoubtedly fun. Going to a three-on-three -three system instead of a 1v1 system does add a much higher level of difficulty and strategy, which is something you can easily adapt to. But there are a number of technical issues which you're going to have to decide of whether or not you can kind of push through them in order to have a really enjoyable experience. And even if you do manage to get to that point, I don't think there's just enough gameplay modes to really warrant a full price. I mean, you're either going to be doing basic matches, you're going to do core matchups, or you're just going to be fighting boss fights, which once you've beaten them once, you pretty much can do it every single time afterwards. And unfortunately, the multiplayer itself isn't even all that interesting, because in the time that I tried playing it, it was very, very difficult and took quite a long time to even get a match going. Now, if I had to give Final Fantasy Decidu NT a rating, I can't see myself giving this any more than a 6.5 out of 10 in the current state that it is in. That's still a good game, but I would not recommend paying $60 for it. Perhaps when this game drops to a sales price and you're a big Final Fantasy fan like I am, then go ahead and pick it up. If you like my game review, feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe to check me in my future game reviews. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and friend me on Facebook to keep track of me in my future videos. And like always, thank you guys for watching, you're awesome, and I'll see you next time.